Welcome back guys to the 12 minute classroom with architect Mark and today since we've already gone through basic CAD I suppose it's time that we went for another exercise of sorts. We did this last in episode 5. I'll probably leave a link down in the description and it's high time that we did another one. A more uh targeted and uh, because in the last episode where we did an exercise we created a wrench uh, but that wrench was a really simple wrench that didn't really have any objective whatsoever no dimensions to speak of just we needed to create something that looks like a wrench and we did that now we're gonna go for a, a simple exercise which is actually a very important one also because we're talking about we're gonna be creating a logo here so let's head on over to our classroom where we will see what is it that we will actually be doing or creating and some history behind why we're doing it and what the importance of this is all right i'll just set up my timer here i don't know why this isn't set up yet so okay it's ready uh hopefully we're through that hopefully that's enough but it should be it's a pretty simple design but very uh succinct i would say or loaded with the symbolism and that's what logos are all about anyway so okay on to the classroom we go and let us start the timer now so what we're seeing right now is a collection of logos from the Philippines. This was a curated set from Philippine logos. Uh, so this came out on Facebook and I got myself a copy because it's, it's a pretty interesting set where we could identify some of these here. Uh, maybe for the younger generation they might not be familiar with some of these anymore but some of the more prominent ones are well we have here swift sweepstakes uh, pldt bagcore uh manila water meralco san miguel kbp harrison plaza digital so all of these are big names, big names. And <clears throat> the creation of a logo is much more iterative, a very iterative process, which let me just show you quickly what I mean by that. So we're going to be making uh, this logo. Okay. This is the design tray logo. We use it on our podcast, uh, which you can see here. There it is, this little thing over here. So that is the logo we created for design trail. And it came from a lot of iteration. Uh, here, let me show you guys. So it started from that, and then moved on to that. Then uh, more, more testing out with the uh, letters D and T together. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I moved on to pieces of paper. Okay. And here we can see the germination of the final logo, which we got right over here. Here, 
okay uh here at the back this was some refinement of it and eventually it this came out of it so this is also dnt but in a in a very simplified and consolidated form so uh with under nine minutes left let's see if we can create that this one i knew okay so we're doing it here in the uh, space where i actually generated it first so that uh we can go back to it if in case i forget something all right so we start off with a rectangle that is 700 units by 700 units correct so far so the important thing to note when creating a logo such as this is that you want to be uh, using a sort of grid and since we we do need a center line for it and the other parts of the logo uh, are projected outward so you can see here that the division is actually thirds not half like this so let's do that let's break this apart with an explode command divide this by three okay that's wrong three and okay so we have the division there let's move this up to the node so that's that's the node mm, node snap uh handle is that what it's called no what's the handle so we're gonna just rotate this here and then uh yeah let's keep the center line there for now so uh one good rule of thumb to to maintain when creating something like a uh a logo like the design tray logo which is a solid basically a solid line is to uh make it a percentage of the entire uh box so we wanted it to be at 10 percent so we create a circle with the diameter of 70 and we're gonna we're gonna use this as our base so we're just putting it there and then putting it on the other side and creating a rectangle so this will be our main stem and we want uh, stems coming out to create the uh, the D and then the T so let me just I did there. I think this was a simple 45 degree uh, angle that we used right around the center and then outside. Okay. So created a 45 degree angle. So you can just use orthographic for this. Actually, let's do that. So it should be easier. So, orthographic on, polar. Okay, so this is 45 degrees. And then we will offset it by 70 to create our uh, stem. Extend that to join the, the main stem there. And we want our circle to be hitting the uh, this bottom line on a tangent now we can just copy this over the attempt to hit that but we want it to be perfectly situated so we just put the circle here first then 
do you want to do? We want the did I do that? I actually forgot. Hmm. Guys, I did this before, but right now, forgetting how I actually. Uh, so the the challenge right now is to make this. Uh, hit the tangent over there. So what do we know? We know that we want to keep the bottom uh, perfectly So let's do a 45 degree line from the center of this and assume that this uh, intersection will be hitting uh, the same angle here. So let's try that. Move this over. And there we go. That's, that's what we wanted to do. Okay, so now let's clean it up by doing trims. And then copy this over. Uh, mirror it to the other side. Uh, say no to the deletion and then move this up to the upper thirds. And then let's create a more cleaner version. Here, other side. I've got multi selection on. I don't really want this, but this over. Turn off ortho, uh, turn on uh, orthographic. So I remove myself from polar. And then let's get all the items that we need in order to clean this up better. So we'll just basically get rid of all the construction lines that we used as guides. And then what we're going to do now is to uh, activate a global trim command that allows us to trim everywhere. And we should be coming out with the final version of the logo right here. Um, so yeah, this one you can you can group this. That's one of the easiest ways to do it or create a new line on it by going through all the parts here but but yeah that's pretty much it so let's check it again it's the final one oh here we <laughs> we used a circle so let's do that Since this is going to be a social media icon, we want it to be sensitive to circular crops. So the timer's up, but we're just gonna <clears throat> scale this down anyway. So a simple scaling command of like. You can try it out. This is 80%. It's still hitting one of the side there. So let's do another. Like, here we go. This is a 70% scale down. 
scaled down version of this big one and it's the design tray logo that's it so eventually ended up with the actual design tray logo as you can see uh what's that here it's being used in actuality so yeah there we have it it's a very simple process but of course it needed a lot of iteration to get there uh and i hope this lesson serves to I mean help you if you're trying to create a brand uh AutoCAD is a very app program app program to create your logos in because these will be uh, vector based uh, entities and you can scale them up or down to however much you want and printers would love that okay I will see you guys again take care